Hey y'all, it's Tay. Welcome back to our channel, or if this is the first video that you are watching of ours, then welcome to our channel. Um, I was just thinking in honor of today, April 6th, being my daughter Layton's due date, my husband and I wanted to kind of let you guys in a little bit on what life has looked like for us these past four months um, throughout this pregnancy journey and now into parenthood journey, there has been quite a lot that has gone down. So we wanted to share that with you. Um, this is Layton's story. This is uh, night one. She gave us the finest linens. The finest the linens. Had to offer. Yes. Thank you. I think if this is Egyptian cotton. This is so sweet. It smells like gel nut. I was 24 weeks pregnant when I went in for just a routine checkup. Uh, the purpose of this checkup was to monitor my cervix because this had been something that my OB had just wanted to keep an eye on throughout basically my entire pregnancy because it had been previously measuring a couple milliliters or millimeters, sorry, millimeters short, which wasn't a big deal at all. Um, but my doctor just wanted to check it one last time and make sure that it hadn't gotten any shorter. So went into the ultrasound and during the ultrasound, they could see that I didn't have much of a cervix left and I was having contractions that I wasn't aware of. So it was determined that I was in preterm labor and I got sent over to the hospital immediately and I met my husband there and they admitted me into the hospital and put me on strict bed rest, which meant that I could get up to go to the bathroom and that was it. Week one was definitely the biggest blur of them all because it, there was just our emotions were high the adrenaline was high we were still trying to process everything that we had just been told and honestly just a little bit uh i was a little bit in denial i it just couldn't believe it i just couldn't believe that this was our reality um and a lot of fear so we really just spent a lot of the time trying to process everything um, and trying to distract ourselves and, and keep busy. So we definitely played a lot of Uno, a lot of Phase 10. Uh, Maddie brought me in this little Christmas cross stitch craft kit and I tried to learn how to cross stitch and the keyword is try because it, it did not happen for this girl, it ain't happening. Watched a lot of TV, a lot of football. I wrote some scripture and some affirmations on some post-it notes and Josh hung them up for me, to, for me to look at every morning and every day. Josh even brought in some of his studio equipment and started writing a song for Layton. That is so cool. Mm -hmm. Week two in the hospital, this was gonna be the week that at the end of it, we were going to reevaluate everything and hopefully go home. At this point, I was extremely hopeful. I, I just felt like, I don't know. I just felt like things were getting better. Um, I'd had an ultrasound, things looked better. Uh, it just felt very, very hopeful and very promising. Josh bought us Oculus, uh, which is just a VR headset, and we played that a lot. He had bought it for us for Christmas because we also, we celebrated Christmas in the hospital, and I got to go outside for a little bit. Josh got to wheel me in a wheelchair outside and got to sit at a picnic table with his parents for a little bit and exchange gifts and just get some fresh air, and that was really nice. And two days after Christmas, Josh had his 30th birthday. 
which we celebrated together in our cute little room that we had made cozy. Week three. Didn't capture a lot of content from this week because things had just really started to take their toll on me. Um, I was just feeling really worn down um, and it was getting hard for me to see the silver lining. Whew. It's been a while since we have updated. Um, had Josh's birthday and then two days later we things kind of hit the fan. So I thought maybe my water had broken so they did a swab and it came back negative but my OB made another game-changing executive decision. Um, her instincts throughout my entire pregnancy have saved me, saved our daughter, um, saved this pregnancy. Um, got a swab to see if my water had broken and it hadn't, but my OB was like, you know what, I'm just gonna do my own check. So she looks at me and sees that I went, I dilated from a one to three now and I had a bulging sack. Sorry if this is TMI, but this is just the technical term of what is happening with my body. Had a bulging sack um, and things were just progressing, unfortunately. Um, and my contractions that day just had started to pick up as well and I could actually feel them before I, I didn't really feel I felt like the tightening of the contractions but I hadn't really felt like the pressure and so they said you know what we're gonna wheel you over to labor and delivery and put you on a mag drip for 24 hours to hopefully slow down the contractions and they did that this feels wrong to do, but you, can you give video evidence that you asked me to do this? It'll be funny. <laughs> You're a trooper. Mm -hmm. I love you. You're crushing it. Mm -hmm. Don't, they said it makes you feel drunk. Do you want me to get drunk with you? It doesn't. This is not. This is not what drinking feels like. That's good. Doctors. Love you. Alright, 1038. <laughs> How are we feeling? Feeling good. Not really. Not really. Do I really look stoned? Yeah. <laughs> I can't see. I mean, I can see. Yeah. They said that was a side effect of the magnesium. <sighs> Someday. Layton's gonna see this. Okay, and she's great. gonna go, my mama did this for me. Yeah. <laughs> I love you, Layton. I love you. We're just a little babies and you're just a little tiny baby. You're a tiny baby. Someday we'll show this to you. You are ready to come into this world, girlfriend. But we need you to chill. Chill. We need you to chill. But we love you. We love you. And that worked. I mean, I, it has been five days, four days since I did that. And I've had a couple contractions, but absolutely nothing to what it was. And now we're just kind of back to, we're back in our other room in the antepartum section, not in labor delivery anymore. We fully expected, I fully expected to have a baby when I went in because things just felt like, I mean, I, they felt so real and scary and I don't know but God showed up like he always does and he was able to stall it and stop it and give us some more days with Leighton in my tummy so now we're one day away from 27 weeks that's just a huge victory it's been really heavy and confusing but at the same time, 
I see God's hand in all of this, um, which is one of the big reasons that we decided to name Leighton, Leighton Grace Kerr. Her middle name is Grace um, because God's grace is all over her story already and she's not even here yet. And you know, Josh and I had, we had a really hard time deciding on the name. I fully expected to give birth to her and have to kind of like see her and feel her presence to be able to officially name her because I just couldn't really commit to a name. But we knew we loved Leighton. But the day we got admitted into the hospital, Josh and I both were like, we need something. We need something like tangible and to solidify this beautiful little girl. And we really wanted people to call her by name when they prayed for her. Um, so no, we, we just felt really convicted to, to name her. And Grace was one of the middle names that we had been toying around with. And it just, it fit. So. I think we had been in the hospital for like two days and we officially decided to, to name her Leighton Grace Kerr. And she is just, I'm so proud of her already. And I hope she's proud of me doing everything I can to, to take care of her and to keep her safe and feeling like a mom already. <laughs> feeling like a mom and I love it, but it is terrifying. Um, I just, uh, this is just not at all what I expected my pregnancy to, to look like, but that's okay because at the end of the day, at the end of all of this, Josh and I just keep saying like one day, three years from now when she's a toddler and she's like being sassy and like talking back or doing whatever, we're going to think back to this moment and think, Remember when we were just living in fear and so scared every single day and in so so much worry and now we have this little fireball of a daughter um, who is healthy. Like I know I know that's I know that that's gonna be the case. Like I know she's gonna be fine. I know she's gonna be healthy. The doctors and the nurses have done absolutely everything they can to make sure that she has the best fighting chance whenever she does enter this world. I've gotten steroids. I've gotten the mag drip, which it it's was to help slow down the contractions, but it also aids in the development of her brain to kind of protect her from cerebral palsy. So she is so well taken care of. And I feel so blessed that we are in the position that we are in with the best nurses and the best doctors and the best hands, God's hands. I'm already so proud of the girl that she is, the woman that she is, the woman that my baby is. Um, I really am though, like she is a little fighter and I love her so much. Week four, a huge, huge milestone happened. When we first got admitted into the hospital, as I said, I was 24 weeks um, and the come tonight, head okay? NICU doctor had came and spoke with us and he told us how already a diva. important and crucial it would be for us to try to get to 28 weeks. Um, cause something with the development, just a lot, a lot of really important stuff happens in those four weeks. So he kind of wanted to put that in my brain as a, as a goal. And so when we reached 28 weeks, which was four weeks in the hospital, we were so happy. We were rejoicing. Ooh. Cheers. Cheers. 28 weeks. That just tastes so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, the music is so good. <laughs> it's really tasty. That exact same day, I started having contractions again. What is happening right what now? What is going on? I think we know. That was like some serious drama in my what? note choice right there. Two. Looks like it says Mama, but it's Anna and Josette. 
is 125. 28 weeks. We're listening to frequencies. Positive energy, self-love increase, deepest healing. Slow pan. Um, they gave me some medicine to try to stop it. They weren't, my contractions weren't really responding to the medicine as well as, as they had before. So they sent us back over to labor and delivery and I was officially, officially in labor. Okay. How crazy do they look? Not crazy. What'd you say your contractions are at? Six and a half. Inching towards a seven? Inching towards a seven. Inching. The night that we were admitted, our doctor was fully expecting for us to have a baby that night. Anywhere from one to three hours is what we were told. Um, but that wasn't the case. Taylor said, sleeping, having no contractions. The doctor was like, all right, take her off the epidural and uh, let's take the baby monitor off. And Leighton was like, that scene wouldn't, wasn't good enough. Labor, take four. Take four. She's crazy. She's crazy. <laughs> that what is she doing? You're crushing it, baby. Thank you. You're stronger than these contractions. Stronger than these contractions. Where's that my hair? Zoom out. End scene. Well, I have been in labor for 72 hours. I've been on an epidural for Sixty plus hours. It's a really discouraging feeling. I feel really defeated. I'm exhausted. And I'm just scared. I don't understand why this is happening. It's really confusing. She's healthy. She looks great on the monitors every single day. Her heart rate her heart rate is great. She is so active. She's perfect. So yeah. Okay. Leighton, this is take five. Take five. Oh, take five. Take five. You want to see what you look like? That's what you look like right now. You look so cute because you're a princess. I'm 38. That's what your princess. mom was hooked up to. This is your this is your mom's drink of choice. Body and light. light. Fun fact about your mother: she doesn't close the lid. <laughs>
see you when we see you, kiddo. Hey. He did it! Yeah. Yeah. After laboring for five days, our daughter Layton Grace Kerr was born at 2.42 p.m. January 17th. Oh, hi, baby. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so cute. Say hi, Mama. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so strong. I love you. And our NICU journey began. Every single day, I would go in and I would hold Layton. We would do skin to skin and I would sing to her. I would read to her and we would just cuddle and snuggle and that was that was our life 53 days Layton was in the NICU and she such a little fighter she fought like hell and I'm so proud of her Layton had incredible nurses the best nurses the best people you will ever find they're heaven sent they definitely made this journey so much easier on me and Layton because uh, she knows she was being taken care of. She knows she was loved every single second of every day. I'm so grateful for that. So after 53 days, we got to take Layton home. And now we are home with our precious, precious baby girl. And the house is a mess and we're tired. And I did brush my hair today, but that normally doesn't happen but we are so 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 happy and you can't really tell there's a love every box there's like a little swing we've got toys swaddles just things all over the house because she has she this is her world and we are just living in it and we have just been soaking up every single second with our little miracle baby i just i wanted to say thank you for all of your prayers, for all of your support, for everyone who reached out and shared a similar story or lifted prayers up. I'm so thankful. And yeah, thank you. That is Layton's story. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.